Hello everyone welcome to this new video. Sorry for my bad English. I'm Italian and this is my first video in English. If you are Italian you find the Italian version of the video on my channel. Today we are going to review the IMA A07 Max with TPA3255 amplification chip. Updated and improved version of the very famous IMA07 amplifier, which was a huge success especially regarding his huge value for money. If the first time you come to my channel and reviews of hi-fi and audio products such as headphones, amplifiers and speakers are of your interest, I recommend you to subscribe to my channel so you don't will miss the next videos. I will publish more video in English in the future. This amplifier it was sent to me directly from the company manufacturer to try and test it with my measuring instruments and then make a review. So let's start right away with the unboxing. Unlike the usual ones products of IMA where the box is generic and there is only the writing of the manufacturing company here we find a box that was made ad hoc for this amplifier. We find the pics of the amplifier and the model name is also indicated also a 2x300W writing but we will go to later check if it actually has this power but I doubt. Once open the box we find the usual IMA sticker. Then we find a booklet of instructions which is written totally in English language. Then the leaflet of warranty written in Chinese. Then a classic power cable. Then the power supply that in this case is 36 volt 6 amp. We find the amplifier in plastic protection. The amplifier is very small. Let's say it fits in one hand. It is made entirely of black anodized aluminium and is quite light. Let's see the front panel of the amplifier. We find only one unique potentiometer that allows turning on the amplifier and the volume adjustment. When we rotate clockwise the potentiometer from the zero position we hear the click of a switch which is the on switch. When we rotate the potentiometer of volume counterclockwise and we go to lower the volume completely, we hear an another click and this indicates that the amplifier is turned off. We can also see that there are two lights at the bottom, one at the right of the potentiometer that indicated the mono mode and one on the left one that indicated the stereo mode. Indeed this amplifier can be used in two modes. Stereo where it behaves like a normal stereo amplifier, so we have two input signals and the right channel and left channel to the speakers. It's possible to be used also in mono version. Therefore amplifier it will only have one input and it will have a unique output. This way we can also decide to do biamping using two amplifiers configured in mono. Let's now look at the rear panel. We find the right and left RCA stereo input. When we go to use the amplifier in mono mode, we can connect either to the right or to the left indifferently. Then we have an AUX output with 3.5 jack that is simply in parallel to inputs, therefore does not undergo the volume adjustment. Then we find the speaker output connectors. The binding posts are different from the other IMI amplifiers. They are a lot bigger, much more beautiful, and they are very useful if we want to insert the cable peeled while the very small ones that they were used in others' amplifiers. So from this point, of course, we have made a big step forward. The amplifier can be used in two different modes, so are indicated two connection types. In particular, when we use the amplifier in mono mode, we are going to connect the speaker between these two connectors where the positive to the left and the negative to the right. While when used in stereo, we will also use displaced connectors further down, and then we will link to the first two the right speaker, and the last two to the left speaker, bearing in mind that the positive's connectors are above, and the negative under. Finally, we find the input for the power supply that is indicated that voltages from 24 to 48 volts are accepted. Let's now see how it's done inside. We notice two large capacitors that are the power supply capacitors. They are 2200 microfarad 63 volts. Under the large capacitors, we find the chip that is welded on the back of the board. Then we will go to see the back of the board better. Above it we find a large relay that I think serves logic functions that this amplifier has. Above the relay we find the four filter capacitors. Then on the right we find the two NE5532 operational amplifiers. The components that are used in this amplifier is really very good. If we see on the back of the board we find a small anodized aluminum block that is screwed right on top of the chip amplification. This allows to transfer all the heat that the amplification chip generates directly to the amplifier case. Like this all the heat is dissipated by the entire aluminum case. Under the heat sink we find the switch that allow you to select mono or stereo. From the point of view of the internal construction I would say which is a big step up from the normal IMA 07. We come now to the acoustic measurements part and first let's go to see the frequency response of this amplifier as the applied loads variation. 
In particular, in this one graph, let's see with the purple curve the frequency response on a load of 8 ohm, and with the blue curve the response into to a 4 ohm load, and with the yellow curve the frequency response to 2 ohm load. How we can see the amplifier is very linear, especially on low and medium frequencies, and over this frequency range, the variation with respect to the load is almost nothing. While instead, when we move to higher frequency around 20 kHz, we start to have more load dependence. This is due to the output filter of the amplifier, and it's a common thing to all economic class D amplifiers. In fact, if there we position it on the frequency of 20 kHz, which is considered the audible limit from the human ear, let's say it's the audible limit of the human ear for a very young boy while for whom is older the audible limit is as much lower than 20 kHz. The response to 8 ohms load we have an increase of 1 dB while on 4 ohm response we are down about 0.5 dB on the N on 2 ohm response we are down 3 dB. So regarding the frequency response on 4 and 8 ohms, very good. The 1 on 2 ohm isn't very good, in fact we have an attenuation at very high frequencies. These graphs are the same for the stereo or mono mode. Let's now evaluate the difference between the right channel and the left channel. In this graph, we can see the frequency response of both channels, and we can see that they are practically overlapped. We have a difference between the two, which is approximately 0.1 dB, so the channels are practically identical. Obviously, this is a measurement which can only be done in stereo mode. Let's see now the harmonic distortion of this amplifier and first go to analyze harmonic distortion in stereo mode with a sin at 1 kHz which is amplified with a power of 5 watts on a 4 ohm resistor. In this graph we have a background noise of 110 dB below which it is not possible to go down to evaluate the harmonic frequencies. We have a second harmonic that has a difference compared to the fundamental of 99.8 dB, a third harmonic with a difference of 97 dB, a fourth harmonic that goes below the noise so I can't rate it and one fifth harmonic which has a difference of 106 dB. After the calculations are done, we get 0.0038% THD which is truly a really good value. We then overlap with to this measures the measurement I have obtained with the amplifier in mono mode which is represented by the blue line in the graph. In this case we can see that the second harmonic disappears totally so we no longer have one second harmonic however increases the third harmonic. In fact, we have a difference compared to the fundamental of 93.6 dB. The fifth harmonic also increases to 102.7 dB and a seventh harmonic of 107.2 dB. This translates to 0.00421% THD. I also evaluated the intermodulation distortion. In particular to this, I applied at the input of the amplifier many sinusoids at different frequency and I evaluated the total distortions. In this case, we have an average of distortion components of approximately minus 87 dB compared to the to the amplitude of the fundamentals and we have worse distortion that goes up to minus 81.3 dB. We also have good values here. How much concerns the mono configuration? In blue, the distortion background remains at same minus 87 dB gets slightly worse, only the major distortion component that rises to minus 76 dB, even in this case very very good values. Let's go to see the graph of intermodulation distortion of this IMA07 Max compared to the graph of IMA07 Pro which is the version with Bluetooth of the IMA A07 Normal, that was the predecessor of this IMA A07 Max. We see the IMA07 Pro in orange while the red curve is the IMA07 Max in stereo configuration. Let's see that precisely regarding the mid frequencies the IMA07 Max has much less distortion compared to the IMA07 Pro. This is also the proof that tells us which is not just the amplifier chip that gives performance, the performances also depend on everything else in the circuit that is built around the amplifier chip. I went to enter the results I had obtained in the general classification of distortion of the amplifiers I have tried on the channel. I separated the IMA07 Max in mono and stereo configuration. However, they both rank highly well in the ranking in particular the one in mono configuration occupies the fourth place while the one in stereo configuration reach second place. Regarding the performance of distortion this amplifier is really good. Let's move on now to the power measurements of this amplifier. In particular let's first see the power for how much concerns the stereo configuration. From these curves we can see that in tests that I did, that were done with the original power supply that comes supplied this IMA07 Max manages to deliver 68 watts into 8 ohms, 125 watts into 4 ohms, and 163 watts into a 2 ohm load. These data are obtained with only one channel in operation and the power is RMS power with a 1% maximum distortion. When instead the load is applied to both channels we always get 68 watts on an 8 ohm load, 
the power into 4 ohms drops slightly because the power supply can no longer provide enough current and therefore we drop to 113 watts on 4 ohm that is still a great value. While on 2 ohm I couldn't test it with the load on both channels because I don't have a dual 2 ohm load. Let's see how it goes in terms the amplifier configured in mono. This case manages to deliver 70 watts on a 8 ohm load, 132 watts into a 4 ohm load, and a whopping 225 watts into a 2 ohm load. That, keeping the cost in mind of the amplifier and especially the size of the amplifier that is really very compact, these values are truly impressive. So let's go and position our Zyima 07 Max in the ranking of power of the amplifier I have tested on the channel. Here two decided to divide into mono and stereo setup and how you can see they rank among the most powerful amplifiers I've tried. Let's now come to the usage and listening notes. The amplifier is a simple amplifier with one analog input and volume control. It has no remote control or anything else. I used it with the IMA T10, which is a DAC with remote control. We can easily turn off the power with an external switch and give it the current even when the amplifier is turned on with the volume at maximum and come on speakers we don't hear any bump or noise. So you can also use as a power amplifier with a preamp and always leave it on and always with the volume to maximum. I play the amp when it's not there any signal is really very silent while when a music signal is provided, the quality that manages to give back is really very very good. We have pretty deep bass but well balanced a a very full mid range and a high range. Also very good in terms of power, we have a good reserve of energy, we can safely push speakers also not very efficient and we can also get a great sound pressure level. Very interesting is also the possibility of use it in mono and then create a multi-amp setup. We have arrived now to the final votes for this IEMA 07 Max. I gave 8.5 for power, 9 for the measurements, 9 for the sound, 7 for design, 7.5 for versatility, and 9 for value for money. The price of this IMA A07 Max on Amazon in Italy is about 129 euros, which is really a very good price, especially if we think to the performance that this little one amplifier manages to have. In the description of the video, you can find the Amazon link to go and check on Amazon price of this product. In fact, prices on Amazon change day by day, and the day I'm recording this video is different from the day you, you are seeing it. I remind you that the link is an affiliate link with Amazon so in the in case you decide to buy this product or any other product going through my link, for you the price won't change but Amazon will recognize me one small percentage that I will need to improve the setup for the channel. Thank you for watching the video until this point. I remind you to leave a like if you like the video. For you it's just a simple click away for me it is very important as at least I have some feedback from you. I also remind you to subscribe to the channel. I will publish more video in English. Thank you and see you in the next video.